as I mentioned, our audit's fully disclosed. Uh, we invite other people to uh, to do an audit of Chapter 8, or if they think there's a better paper out there, we have them audit that and we'll publish that. Uh, we only publish it if they provide their name and materials that we can contact them. We've also welcomed commentary and peer review on our paper. Uh, we've asked a lot of people to do this. Those 240 people in our expert panel, we all sent them all copies of this paper and asked them to comment on it. Some of them wrote back and said, please remove me from your mailing list. Uh, but we have gotten some comments and helpful peer review. Uh, so, no scientific forecast to date. Um, conclusion, it's climate, it's complex, it's poorly understood, there's, there's much uncertainty. Uh, IPCC forecasts violate important principles. In a situation like this, um, you would expect that the climate models would be inferior to a simple, naive model such as uh, uh, temperature change, temperature will not change. Uh, and this, this draws from a number of different fields. It uh, is, comes up in economics. Uh, people develop these really complex models. I'm involved with the forecast now of, uh, I forget how many years, 90 some years for health care. How much is going to be spent there? And again, I'm running up against this thing with people using enormously complex models. And I feel like running an Al another Al Gore competition. Um, uh, is the naive model best? The naive model in this case is temperature will not change in the future. We know it's going to change, but we don't know the direction, we don't know the magnitude, so I think we're pretty safe with a uh, forecast that it will not change. But uh, it's possible. Is it clarification here? No, I have a oh, Could you hold the question until later? Because well, we should have some time. Uh, there are some other methods that might work and could be tested out. Things like extrapolation of very long-term trends. I, I love some of those papers where people are doing uh, 15,000 years of data in a trend and then 10,000 and 5,000 in five years. Uh, it depends on which time period you select. Uh, a naive model with drift. You know, there might be some evidence that you have a very small uh, change, so that would be interesting. Uh, a thing called rule-based forecasting, which it's explained on their forecasting principles website, but that takes account of people's prior knowledge. You know, do we expect the temperature to go up? Then that should affect our extrapolation method. Uh, simple models using uh, well-founded causal relationships might help if you can identify the causal variables and forecast the causal variables. And one of my favorites, combining forecasts from different methods, uh, I think might be worth testing. Incidentally, we also forecast political elections, and the poly vote will be starting up shortly in a few months, where we combine forecasts from different methods. Uh, I made this challenge to uh, Al Gore, Global Warming Challenge. Uh, there's these claims that Earth is warming rapidly. Um, so the challenge is uh, to predict global mean temperature over 10 years. It's not real long, but I want to be around when this thing ends, so I thought 10 years is safe enough. Uh, so the deal is Al Gore selects any current model. All he has to do is spend five minutes and say, yeah, pick one model and, uh, and don't fuss around with it. We're going to take the outputs from that model and I will be able to forecast more accurately. Now, I only use 10 years and we're, you know, I'm willing to talk about it. I don't think I'd lose, but, but I might. Uh, each of us would deposit 10000 in a trust fund on December of 2007. The value will go to the winner's charity in 2018. Uh, the purpose of the challenge is, as I say, not to win, although I expect to. The purpose is uh, to get people involved in using scientific methods. And this is something that I thought Al Gore keeps saying, that we should be using scientific methods. Um, in this case, for public policy, we've got to use evidence-based forecasting principles. Uh, we can do comparative tests of a variety of methods going beyond the naive. Um, 
we want to have proper validation tests. I have a very crude uh, validation test here, you know, 10 years temperature. Uh, I was motivated by my friend Julian Simon in his uh, uh, energy forecast long ago about that he can predict re resource forecasts. Uh, so I was motivated to keep it simple, but I'd be willing to make it more complicated. Updates on the challenge are provided at theclimatebet.com. You can see my correspondence with Al Gore on there, and, well, with his press people. They're very cordial, and it's been very nice. But uh, we haven't, and he's looking forward to reading my book, but we haven't made it past that. As I mentioned before, uh, failure in any of the three problems negates public policy recommendations. Now, forecasts of global warming may be harmful if accepted. Uh, they take away, you know, there's so much money to spend. It's an economic problem, so if you spend it here, you lose it elsewhere. And I think it's false to base everything on global warming forecasts. I mean, if you have a policy recommendation, why not make the policy recommendation directly and look at the costs and benefits? Uh, if you tie it all to global warming, um, you're liable to throw out some useful policies simply because it's based on false premises. Our standards for public policy forecasting are that anyone can publish forecasts. We're trying to get people to publish for forecasting audits. Uh, additional audits of global warming, but we'd like to extend this to any uh, area. Uh, they were building a, a convention center in Philadelphia, and I wanted to uh, do an audit there, so uh, they wouldn't, at that time, as a few years ago, they wouldn't let me uh, look at how they made the forecast. But uh, I think the people who are doing the forecasting should do the audits. Those global climate people should be doing audits on their work, and I think independent people should be doing audits and publishing these things. Um, so we'll publish this. Uh, we'll moderate it to get rid of advertisements and uh, nasty arguments about people. So this is right in line with what uh, Al Gore says. Public policy should be based on science, scientific forecasting in this case. Uh, I've shown you that forecasts from expert judgments have no value. Um, we have to turn towards evidence-based principles. And back to the conclusions. Uh, first, we've been unable to find a single scientific forecast to support global warming. Uh, the challenge is still out there. Uh, Studies have been getting a lot of attention among uh, bloggers, at least. Uh, I get some uh, nasty email. I get people from uh, that do not agree. I get a lot of email from people that do agree. Uh, and uh, nobody yet has been able to come up with a scientific forecast. Climate will change in the future, but to date, the most sensible forecast is no change. We're not sure, I don't even think we're sure of the direction uh, that it's going on in the future. I know some people agree with that, but I'd like to see the evidence. Uh, and certainly, there's a lot of uncertainty about the magnitude. When we start to do this, we should be testing each of these methods to see whether any of them are more accurate than the no change forecast. Okay, ready for questions?